Is it dead in here or is it just me? No, it's the zombies from Moratau from 1957. Okay, Bob, these are zombies that have corporeal bodies that can't die and they can't be injured. Okay. Hi there. Welcome to Creature Features, now in its 14th year. I am your host, Al Omega, the alpha and omega of all things science fiction and horror. Halloween is right around the corner, and we are in the mood for some spooky fun. Tonight, we have a movie that I always enjoyed when it came out back in 1957. The Zombies of Moratau. This film was directed by Edward L. Kahn, who left us in 63, and he was known for movies like The Invisible Invaders and The Four Skulls of Jonathan Drake, which we've done, <laughs> and It, The Terror from Beyond Space. Originally from Brooklyn, he was known for having a special love of zombies. Remember, kids... If necrophilia doesn't leave a bad taste in your mouth, you're doing it wrong. This was written by George H. Plimpton, who left us in 72, and he did a number of the Flash Gordon serials and things like Lost Planet and The Three Stooges Follies. I just want to see Curly and Little Tutu doing a dance. Da, 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 da. Anyway. <laughs> Another Brooklyn boy, just before his passing, he was awarded the Connor Award by the Brothers of the Phi Alpha Tau Fraternity, and was made an honorary brother. The screenplay was written by Bernard Gordon, and he left us more recently in 2007, and he did things like The Day of the Triffids, and Earth vs. the Flying Saucers, and The Man Who Turned to Stone. Well, that was a good one. One famous thing he did was fight against McCarthyism. He was called to testify in front of the House of Un-American Activities Committee. And while he never actually got called, one of his friends named him as a communist. And he was fired and blacklisted for years. He also led a protest against the honorary Oscar awarded to Eliza Kazan in 1999 because he was one of the first people to name names during the trials. You know, Bob, it amazes me even to this day that people will just go and parrot the company line just to get ahead, and, and they have no concern of what kind of damage they can do to other people by repeating information that either they didn't bother to check to see if it was correct or that they, in fact, knew wasn't correct, but they didn't care. Just as long as they got what they wanted. Now, on to our actors. In the part of Jeff Clark, we have Greg Palmer, left us in 2015, and while he did a number of action-adventure films, yeah, <laughs> he did a lot of fun things like Abbott and Costello, Go to Mars, and The Creature Walks Among Us, and from Hell It Came, great one. That's a movie where the, the men are, are, walk around in skirts and are afraid of trees. The Tabunga. He also did the ranch, one of the ranchers in the episode Spectre of the Gun from Star Trek, the original series. Now, he's a local boy, originally from San Francisco, but Norwegian by heritage. He served in World War II in the Army Air Corps and at the rank of sergeant. A little trivia, he auditioned for the 1950s TV show Little Abner, and the actress auditioning for Daisy May was Marilyn Monroe. Neither one of them got the job. It's really hard to believe Marilyn Monroe didn't get the job for Macy Jane. Macy Jane? 
It was perfect for her. Good old Daisy May. In the part of the romantic lead, which is not the girl that sticks her tongue down his throat, in the opening scene is Jan Peters. We have Autumn Russell. Originally from Oklahoma, she was in things like Untamed Women and Spartacus. Her last role was in 1960. Now, as the owner of the previously aforementioned tongue, Mona Harrison, we have Allison Hayes, who left us in 1977, and she cuts a very pointy figure in such movies as Attack of the 50-Foot Woman and The Undead, a movie which we've done, and The Crawling Hand, which is probably trying to get up her blouse. Originally from Charleston, West Virginia, she got her first taste of fame entering a Miss America pageant. While she is perfectly capable of playing sleazy and sexy characters... Is it warm in here or is it just me? Uh, uh, yeah, she also has a penchant for comedy. <laughs> She'll make you laugh. Uh, she's in things like Who's Been Sleeping in My Bed? A movie you couldn't make today. And she's in movies like Tickle Me with Elvis. Now, I've talked about this before, and she had one of the most unlucky combination of events happen. As soon as she got into Hollywood, her agent took her out to lunch, and Cecil B. DeMille saw her and said how she looked exactly like the wife of Moses as she had been drawn as a character for the movie Ten Commandments. Unfortunately, she was under contract with Universal and never got the part. Actually, all she got was the boot. Apparently, she's also a gifted concert pianist. So you got to like a woman that can do something different with both hands at the same time. In the part of her husband, George Harrison, no relation, we have Joel Ashley, and he left us in 2000, and he did a lot of Western movies like Shotgun Slade, Bat Masterson, but he was also in things like Father Knows Best. Originally from Atlanta, Georgia, he attended Georgia Military Academy, and graduated from Black Fox Military Academy in Los Angeles at 16. He did a number of very significant plays, so he's not afraid to tread the boards, and worked in radio as well. During World War II, he joined the Marines and was wounded at Guadalcanal. So doing something like his character is in doing in this movie was right up his alley in real life. Tough guy. In the part of Dr. Jonathan Egger, we have Morris Ankrum, and we have seen him in many, many, many movies of the times. Now, while he left us in 1964, he left behind a huge amount of movies, often playing military men or doctors, such as in this movie. He worked on films like Rocket Ship XM and The Giant Claw, which has to be the ugliest movie monster ever. I can just see the prop guy being admonished, you know, by the directors. Like, I said I wanted an ugly monster. I meant, like, scary, not like, you know, Cousin Stevie's date ugly. Jeez. He also did Giants from the Unknown, a great classic, which we'll have to look into having here. Originally from Danville, Illinois, he graduated from Southern Law School and was an attorney and economics professor before finally becoming an actor. Many people will recognize him as a judge from many of the Perry Mason episodes. That's foreshadowing, kids. He was so famous a face that when they made the movie Matinee in 1993, which celebrates these 50s movies, and there's one part where there's a film where he's part man, part ant, he's Mant, and there's a character named General Ankrum, which is named after him. I hope someday someone makes a movie and they name a character after me. In the part of Sam the Driver, we have Gene Roth. Now, he left the building in 1976, but he was in great movies like The Spider and Twice Told Tales, and even Planet of the Apes, the TV series. Remember that one? I liked that one. Went too quickly. Originally from Redfield, South Dakota... His father was a professional gambler, and his mother was a dressmaker, which is why all the pockets in his clothes at the time were three times longer than normal and double-stitched. 
just in case. He got his big start in acting when he was helping install a pipe organ into a theater, and someone said, hey, you look like you'd make a great Nazi, which is a very dangerous thing to say to anyone at any time, but it got it started in acting. We should point out that his background is actually Swedish and not German. And finally, Grandmother Peters is played by the very famous Marjorie Eaton. Now, she left the building in 86, but she was in just so much. Things you wouldn't even recognize her in. She was in Night Tide. And the reincarnation of Peter Proud, which we've done. And she even played the Emperor in Star Wars Episode V, The Empire Strikes Back. Big holographic version of him. Originally from San Francisco, she's a local girl, and a rather private one at that. Now tonight, uh, we have a guest coming in. So we have some great things to talk to him about, and he should know a few things about handling zombies. Now I think we have time for one of our special episodes, plus a few interviews from WonderCon and San Diego Comic-Con, and then we'll get directly into tonight's show. You know, if they really wanted to see zombies, they should have been here last week when they had the heat wave. Oy vey. And once again, we're here at San Diego Comic-Con, and now I'm with... Ray. Ray. And I, I can't say that I can place the costume, Ray. Um, Ibuki Miura from Danganronpa 2. I still can't place that word, so there. <laughs> Try that one more time. Um, Ibuki Miura from Danganronpa 2. Okay, I don't know that one. It's a video game. Ah. Yeah. As I said, poor Al only gets to play PC games. He doesn't have the uh, console. So, uh, so how long has the game been out? Um, sorry, so, could you repeat that? How long has the game been out? Uh, I think the first one came out in 2010 or 11. How long have you been watching it? Um, I just over, over quarantine is when I started. Ah, uh, many people do that. Yeah. Ah, uh, I hadn't thought about that. I guess a lot of video games had a lot, big surge of people yeah, playing it yeah. now the quarantine. So, how are you enjoying the convention? Oh, it's so much fun. It's really great seeing all the cosplayers. And, and you look fabulous as a cosplayer. Thank you. So, as I said, this is a horror sci-fi show. What's a horror show that you've seen recently that you liked? Um... Or that you like, you want to talk about? Well, Dom and Rampa itself is, it's not really horror, but it definitely has some dark themes. Dark themes. Yeah, because it's about a school trip gone wrong in which the head. Don't they all? True, true. Um, but the headmaster, turn, it re he reveals that it's a killing game in which the only way to escape is by killing one of your classmates without getting caught. So it's kind of like, uh, what was that, uh, high school grand uh, casino? Back, uh, made back, way, way back when? <laughs> all right, well, thank you very much for being on the show with us. Yeah, thank you, you too. Have a nice, nice you to get a haircut, Marjorie Stewart Baxter. When you disobey me, this is what it comes to. Oh, I suppose you find this amusing, do you, Hubert Cumberdale? You're the best behaved, Jeremy Fisher. You, you, you'll be first in the bathtub tonight. Oh, don't give me those tears now. You'll never be a real boy, Hubert Cumberdale. I 
think you're about ready to grow up a little, don't you? Dream boat. What's your number? Sugar cheeks. Thunder thighs. Ladies and gentlemen, a new, improved, a Hubert Camberdale. The real boy. I just went to dunk on the rooftops for all to see. I'm fresh and ready for life. <laughs> I'm a big boy now. They grow up so fast, don't they? <laughs> And he's already running about and playing with all the other little girls and boys. I've surely been blessed by, by the soft hand of our great provider. Ah, oh, you're just a glass brother. You wouldn't understand. Stupid boy. Y yes, Mother. I am a stupid boy. I'm sorry, Mother. Fetch me a bowl of porridge. Yes. Glass, Mother. He won't let me pass it. He keeps on. What a weak little squirt you are. He keeps on. Stop it. He's doing it. Look at him. Mom, look Come on, he's weakly doing. bones. Pass Mother the porridge. I think you want her to starve. I'd rather starve than sit here and watch this pathetic display. You'll forever just be a lonely reflection. It's not fair. I I've been in here for too long. I, I, I want to come home now. Those khaki spider fingers aren't going anywhere. Andrew Hans. <gasps> what a horrible thing to say. Don't worry, new, improved Hubert Cumberdale, the real boy. I know of another entrance. Why is Glass Brother so mean, Mr. Fingers? He was raised under the beast's sun. Morning, wet legs. Thought you'd slip in the back door, did you? Uh, uh, I I absolutely shan't. meddling is punishable by a stern rasping. Rasp. 
Rasp, rasp. 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 Stop, stop rasping. And full of Ordex powder. Brown pebbles. A half cup of spider milk. Speckled huckleberry leaf. But, but, but glass mother, uh, you know the speckled huckleberry leaf makes my tummy box all bilious. I don't want another fever. You'll need what I tell you to. Don't make me come through that mirror and poke out your eyes! Now get it down ya. Fingers. I'll clean it up. Ah, you're a good lad. Who are you talking to? Why, Hubert Cumberdale, of course. Ah, oh. hello there, little boy. <laughs> He's my real life flesh boy. The most beautiful boy in the world. He'll make a good broom, lad. Stick him in the coal shed.
the spittle, you dirty little minge splinter. Get your eyes from my chest. Get your So we're sitting here with Bon Connor. What a great name, Bon. Uh, Thank you. Do you. We were just saying, what, what is the nationality of that background? Is that Swedish? I'm not sure. I heard it's German, but I all I yeah, I know my I father. Are, yeah, that works. Uh, my father was um, a huge fan of ACDC, so he named oh. me after Bon Scott. Okay, yeah. I know they were Australian, but <laughs> beyond okay. that, yeah. I love ACDC. Yeah, me too. The poor guy Angus there, you know, running around. He's one of the in the the, the schoolboy suit. He is he's freezing good. his ass off at seventy on stage now. He's, he's like, still doing it. Yeah, yeah. It, so, it wears me out watching him. So. I'm not watching. Him. Come on, he's it's amazing he has any vocal cords or hearing left after all of that. I, I don't know how they do it. Yeah, they're so. super he heroes. <laughs> so. And and you're uh, an actor. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk about some stage work. Have you done any film work? Yeah, I've done some film work. Uh, just mostly uh, non-union. I have a film. I'm a lead in the film right now. That's wrong with non-union. Yeah, it's a great starting place. Yeah. There are plenty of other people who are non-union looking to work, and they're super talented. I'm really lucky. Have one short film being uh, submitted to festivals as we speak. So oh, cool. hopefully something comes for that. Yeah. A lot of people don't know that uh, when they made Evil Dead, the first one, a lot of those were. Union actors working off union, and some have got in trouble for that. That's I've I've heard that actually. Yeah. I heard it was quite a feat to get those films done. The first one, especially, yeah. Well, they didn't have the Vaso cam, which I just love. So, what, what, I'm sorry, what's that? Uh, <laughs> sorry, <cam>. trivia. <laughs> Please, um, <laughs> there's something called a slider, which takes a camera and pans it laterally. And they didn't have one of those, so they took a two by four and they basically made a big U piece out of some scrap lumber and just slathered it up with Vaseline so it would slide smoothly across with the camera mounted to it. That's actually... And that was the Vaso cam. <laughs> Makes sense, and that's actually a great idea, yeah, actually. I mean, it's messy, but it works. And it if you're out in the middle of nowhere, and that's what you got. This you is what filmmaking got. is really about. It's not about having all the right equipment or any of that stuff. It's about making it happen. Yes, and you and get uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah, stuff, stuff does happen in Absolutely. horrible things. I always talk about my first movie I was in, I had to eat a dead squirrel. So if you're not willing to eat a dead squirrel, you're not ready for film. <laughs> no, that's a feat. I'm, I don't even know if I'm ready for that. <laughs> that's amazing. Bravo. But you are in stage, as we have brought up Evil Dead. Mm -hmm. in Into Evil Dead, you're in the Evil Dead, the musical. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Which is, great, which is playing at the Raven Theater in Healdsburg, mm -hmm. starting on the 23rd? Exactly. 23rd, yeah. which is coming up. Well, it's coming up. this comes, it'll already be out. But yeah. that doesn't mean they can't still come and see you because it's running for a while. Yes, uh, three, two weekends after that weekend of the 23rd. So, yeah, yeah you got plenty of time. Yeah. Yeah. And and which character do you play? I play oh, Ash no. <laughs> Ashley Williams. I play Ashley Williams, originated by Bruce Campbell. Some big shoes to fill. Oh, yeah. yeah, apparently. A big girl these days, but <laughs> I, I, gotta, I gotta give him a hard time about that. I mean, we're all getting older now. Like seventy five. He's still doing it. Yeah, yeah I, mean, I hope I'm like that lucky. Fantastic is supposed to look like. You know what? He does. Like fantastic Four. He'd be like the redneck version of Mr. Fantastic. He does, and he has a nice, great cyber. I don't know what the hell I'm doing, but I'm, 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 I'm up here pushing the buttons. He's, yep, yeah. That's half of being in any any real job, is just you know, pushing the buttons. <laughs> and, yeah, and acting like you know what you're doing, <laughs> isn't it? Yeah. But, yeah, Ashley Williams, yeah, great, great musical. It's really an ensemble piece, but, yeah, I guess yeah. he's the familiar character, yeah. Yeah. How did you get into that one? Did you apply for that somewhere? Or? Yeah, well, they originally wanted to do Mamma Mia, the rights got pulled, and they wanted to do Chicago, rights got pulled, and we were all tied into that. And once, uh, actually, Troy Thomas Evans, the choreographer, has been a longtime fan of the show, he wanted to put it on, and uh, he basically asked me if I wanted the role. Because he originally wanted to do it, but he was going to be too busy. Mm -hmm. I've worked with him a bunch of times, and I guess he trusted me enough because I wasn't familiar with the show. But he gave it to me, and um, I found out the hard way that it's quite a big role. And I could see why he passed it off, to be honest. But yeah. Well, we see this in actually in film. Uh, production companies will get used to the same actors over and over and over. Absolutely. They know how they can push them and make them do stuff like eat dead squirrels. <laughs> so, uh, uh, there was uh, uh, one cheesy... 
director that was known for taking people out on location, and uh, uh, he filmed you know, two or three movies with the same people because you have them out there. Might as well make more than one movie. Multitask. Yeah. Yeah. In I fact, like that. Uh, uh, for our podcast, we interviewed a gentleman, Sam Irving, who uh, did a, a, a movie. And it was in Yugoslavia or something. They had to build a western town from the 1800s. Oh, wow. So they said, let's make the sequel while we're here. We haven't written it yet, but let's make the sequel. You might as well. Yeah. yeah. They had George Takai in it, so. I, lo- I might know this movie. No, it's not. You know, a- he played the doctor. I know this movie. Okay. Can I say the name? Or is it, okay, Oblivion. Is it Oblivion? Yes, I, I know Oblivion. Yeah, I'm familiar. I remember George Takai was and in Mr. it. Mr. Hong from Star Trek Next Generation is in it. Oh, my goodness. As the Undertaker. I forgot that he, um, George Takai, because he has this different voice, he usually has yeah. a deep baritone, but in that he was all very, raspy. Very different. Very different. <laughs> so you have to be Scotty for a change. Dude. But that's amazing that they filmed it all in one shoe. Makes yeah. a lot of sense. So, I think in the sequel, they blow the town up anyway, so it all works out. There you go. They had to get so, rid of it. Are you going to blow up the set when we're done? No, yeah, I don't. Oh. It's, I, I know. That would be nice, right? Yeah. You know, we will have to tell everyone to clear up, but we are going to get the set very fake bloody, if you will. Oh, yeah. Wet production. Very wet. Wear <laughs> white and sit in the front row. Yes, there's a splatter zone. Yes. Enjoy. Yeah. Yeah. Hope to see you all there. <laughs> so, how long have you been an actor? My goodness. Well, let's see. I've been doing theater since I was a kid. Theater. Theater. I theater. do love theater. I do love Shakespeare, believe it or not. Um, Musical theater was kind of an accident because I loved acting and it just kind of, if you wanted to act, you learn how to sing and dance and I'm so glad I did. Um, but film, I think, is my real passion, trying to do more of that, trying to write my own scripts and kind of start my own production company. I mean, after being on, being here, I mean, it's very inspiring, I got to say. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, I got, the, I got the fire back for sure. Well, I can, I can see that. I mean, if you've been doing musical theater since high school, so you're still a virgin is what you're saying. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I am still a virgin. Yes, still yes. Pure. yes, yes. Pure I'm very pure. I'm strong, <laughs> yeah. of something, strong of will, yes. something. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, what's your favorite play that you've got to do? Oh man, my favorite, honestly, and I'm not just saying in this. Um, this is probably my favorite show I've done. Um, didn't expect it, but how I'm. Could it not be? I mean, how could so it not? Fun. I'm such a. Uh, I'm a huge horror movie fan. I mean, I like musicals. I love doing them, but I, I, I don't see as much as them as I should. I love horror films. So the second I found out doing a Halloween type show, I um I, I can't think imagine anything better right now. Yeah. It's so fun. It's grueling, but it's very fun. <laughs> so do you get the girl at the end of this one? Uh sometimes they change that. They do change that. This one he No, he doesn't get the girl. Uh, yeah. Or, or you know, he get he gets it's up for interpretation, really. Oh, oh, oh. He gets a girl, but in what form does he? <laughs> that's, that's always the problem. There you go. That's yeah, the yeah. It's like how does how is he going to get it this time? But that's All true. My boyfriends keep getting eaten by Kandari and Dean. Bravo! Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Oh, Annie. Yeah. Great character played by Kelly Devoto. She's amazing. Um. Yeah. It's just. Uh, I think and that's one of my great other actresses in there. Actresses. Yes. Yeah. I mean, got uh Beth Ashley Talbot. Um. Like I said, it's such an. I guess you're familiar. Such an ensemble show. I mean, everybody's multitasking. Either they're playing an evil version of themselves, a normal version of themselves. It's a the disemboweled very... version of themselves. <laughs> I don't think that sounds terrible. But what if somebody came up and emboweled and just walked up with a bunch of intestines and started shoving them in? You know what? That would be horrible. That's fine. Think about that. No. Yeah, and that's what we're doing backstage. Again, the actor ready. It's like, all right, put the bowels in. Put the bowels in. Art, right, you're on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so. I had an uncle that was a producer on Broadway, so I got to see a lot of theater back in the day. Oh, wow. Man. So, yeah, you know ten times more than I do. That's amazing. I wouldn't say that. <laughs> I've, forgotten. I've forgotten more than you know. <laughs> Actually, I got to meet Vincent once upon a time. Lovely man. You met Vincent Price? Yes. Wow. Yes. That is amazing. How, how old were you, may I ask? I, was, I think I was 12. I was very small. You were a kid. 12. Yeah. And uh, he sits with something or other. And, uh, yes, the ladies liked him. And the reason why, is my, my main memory of it, is the hand coming down forever. He has huge hands, just reaching down to shake hands with me. He did have, forever yeah. Coming. Yeah, so he's got big hands. But that's so cool that he shook your hand. He yeah, was he really was cool with you. Though, yeah, and the ladies liked him. He said, oh, yeah. Well, apparently so did the guys. So. <laughs> hey, you know what? That's great. When you're Vincent Price, you can do whatever the heck you want. You can be loved by all. That's yeah. Right. That's right. Much like, you know, actually with, with <laughs> Yeah, Bruce Campbell. Yeah, all of them. Yeah, yeah. Bruce, man. Bruce, I love Bruce. I do. <laughs> I do. I love him. <laughs> Have you seen, seen his uh, his parody of My Name is Bruce? I did see My Name okay. is Bruce. Um, I love so that one. So the stuff is all okay, right? <laughs> yes, but freaking, 
What's the one? Uh, Bubba Hotep. Oh, Bubba Hotep. Not to, I'm That's assuming a sleeper. You... Go look that one up if you haven't seen it. Bubba Hotep is great. Is it? Yeah, I, 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 I've seen it. I liked it a lot. Wasn't what I was. I didn't know what I was expecting, but I was pleasantly surprised. That was a good one. I think it's my favorite of his. Oh, I like it. It's old people kicking butt. So, so that's. For me, that's right up there with Reds and Cockneys versus Zombies, which we may show here for Halloween or something. There you go. Cockneys yes. versus Zombies. That's yes, it's fun. about a zombie outbreak, and uh, there are a couple of interns that or at least decide to stay with their patients at the old folks' home. And it's all old soldiers, so they're not going down without a fight. They may not be able to walk anymore, so if they get the wheelchair out, and we're going, man. That sounds pretty awesome. That yeah. sounds epic, actually. <laughs> that's how it would go if old people were out there, man. Hey, man, yeah. <laughs> They're dangerous, so they are. So, uh, so you're doing uh, Ash. Mm -hmm. How many songs do you have to sing? I think actually didn't count, but I think roughly at least yeah, at least nine songs. Wow. I think yeah, maybe nine songs. Nine yeah, songs. I um, I try not to think about it because it's, it's a long performance. It's very long performance. Wow. I think the character is only off stage for two scenes, and those scenes only last about two minutes. So really no chance to catch your breath. So you or pee. Or important. go to the bathroom. Yeah. Or drink tea. Or yeah. Yeah, don't drink any tea. Don't drink tea. Don't no, tea. I found that out the hard way. <laughs> I did recently, well, actually. Well, we tell that story about Gustav there or whatever it was. Right. No, yeah. Yeah, so. Uh, Judy. Poor guy. <laughs> it's, but, uh, yeah, a lot of songs. Um, yeah, and a lot of physicality. It's, yeah, a lot of falling down, a lot of screaming. You. Yeah, but. A lot of blood spraying, but like I said, it's so fun. It's really fun. When is blood spraying not fun? It's oh, true. Fun. Yeah. It's and you have a lovely chainsaw to work with. So. Yes, yeah. I actually wanted to bring it today, unfortunately, but it's well, on the mantelpiece staying safe for the show. That's that's how they work. I mean, in the original creature features, mm -hmm. the skull would always disappear because the, the crew was always walking off of the skull. Oh, really? So it keeps changing. Oh, that yeah. makes sense. No. Were they... Intentionally taking it, or yes, they were. I imagine they're intentionally taking it. It wasn't just like an accident. It's like, oh, let's move this out of the way for now, and they no, forgot. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. No, oh, that's amazing. Bob doesn't like get manhandled unless you're cute. Yeah, there you, you go. The conventions, the girls are very fond of him. Really? Okay. Yeah. He, he, he'll, he'll let that pass. <laughs> He's trying to take an Elvira's blouse and be the third boot. Hey. <laughs> there you go. Smart man. Yeah. <laughs> if only we could all go there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, what else do you do uh, besides act? Anything else fun? Yeah, well, I mean, right now I'm just doing a lot of, well, I guess it's still acting, a lot of voiceover work. Well, yeah, well, it sounds like you do the voiceover work. You've got a thank, great voice. Thank right? you. I appreciate it. I wish I could say Ash is a, a deep bass. Unfortunately, he's more of a high baritone. But um, you mentioned, uh, I think, anime, and I'm actually starting to get more familiar with that because of voiceover work. A lot of great. Um, anime jobs. And that's, you can speak Japanese? I should learn, actually. I've been thinking about that. I mean, it's one thing to say it, but I thought of that because of how many wonderful anime um, stories there are out there right now. I just yes. to learn that, just to have Japan, double threat. A lot of, of, of American voices that that's what I hear. Japanese. That's what I hear. Properly. Yes, great, great way to earn a living, but still doing what you love. You know, it's still a form of acting. Yeah. And you could do it at home. I would <laughs> love to do voice work for anime. That would be you should. Something, probably. You, you could do it. <laughs> so, I'd be like Robin Williams. I'd be bouncing off the of walls too much. Really? Yeah, you can't. You know, five hours later, I haven't got line one done out of the script. <laughs> five hours of fun stuff, and not one line out of the script. Not what single acting didn't get anything done. Yeah. yeah. So. Oh, boy, being on set. <laughs> Well, Robert Williams, when he did Aladdin, had like, you know, 10 hours of extra crap they couldn't throw in. I bet. I believe it. In fact, that's one of the reasons why they didn't get an award for it was because so much of it was just made up by him. Really? Yeah. He he basically it wrote the script. script. Wow. He he was the script. Yeah. Wow, that's Mrs. amazing. There's like three different versions of it, depending on how dirty he wanted to hear it. I bet. Yeah, I bet he could get it really dirty, which... Yeah. I mean, I, I love seeing that side of him. Right? I love seeing that side of him. Yeah. Yes. Man, so, R.I.P. I used to live over here in Marin for a while. I heard that. Yeah. yeah. That's amazing. No, he's still, he's still. Oh, wow. Yeah. Big hero. Still, Big hero. still hard Great to man. think of. Yeah. Wow. That's amazing. Well, after this, what's, what's on the horizon for you? Uh, right now, I have a couple films I got to do in uh, Sacramento. Some one's about a, um, I guess, Jack the Ripper. Oh, I mean, yeah. Good. I love the, yeah, you know, yes, I love, I love that, you know, gothic vibe. Um, 
it seems to be my brand in film. Girl, so <laughs> you know what? Come on down. We'll go on set. You know, we'll go to some bars. And no, but yeah, um, cool. yeah, just uh, that voiceover work and potentially uh, another play. Yeah, just keeping keep going. Yeah, it's been I've been very lucky, very grateful. Well, it's fortunate. Yeah. We obviously have a lot of talent. We're looking forward to seeing more of you and things. Thank you. So, Vaughn Connor, yes, come right. see him at uh, Evil Dead the Musical at the Raven Theater in Healdsburg. Please. Thank you so much for stopping. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Thank you. I'm back in Alameda here at San Diego Comic-Con, and I am with... Hi, I'm Sage. Sage. Is that the character from a video no, game? it's Glamrock Chica from Five Nights at Freddy's from Security Breach. Okay, well, I know Five Nights at Freddy's, at least. Very similar to the uh, Banana Splits movie. So, and how long have you been playing? Since third grade, and I am now a sophomore. Wow, you've been at it for a while. What, what drew you to this? Um, seeing other cosplayers and just playing the game and having ideas. Well, but what about this character specific that you like, that you want to see She's her? always been so bright and colorful and just popped out to me. Well, you are certainly very bright and colorful, and you're, uh, I mean, the neon. I'm, I can remember the 80s when men would wear shirts like this, just like that. And that was what straight men were wearing. <laughs> <laughs> so... And, of course, the leg warmers to go with it, which you can't see on camera. So, so we talk about horror movies and sci-fi. Is there a horror movie or sci-fi movie that sticks out in your memory? Chucky. Or Annabelle. Oh, Annabelle. Maybe the two of them should get together. Call yes. her Chucky Bell. <laughs> Chucky Bell. Sounds like, a, you know, that sounds like a pizza drive through restaurant. Chucky Bell! <laughs> get your pizza and have the holy smucks scared out, scared out of you. So, All right, well, thank you very much for being on the show with me. No problem. And we're back to you. Sorry, Miss Jan. Sam, I think by now you know every hole in this road. I know all the holes, Miss Jan, but on this road there's no place to go but in them. Well, it's a good thing Africa hasn't completely changed. I was afraid after ten years you'd be driving me home on a super highway with drive-ins on both sides. Nothing much has changed in this part of Africa, Miss Jan. Not in ten years. Not in fifty years. It wasn't a man. It was one of them. I'm truly sorry, Miss Jan. But I couldn't stop. There's your grandma now. She'll tell you I was right. She's waiting for you. You're trembling. We 
we hit a man, ran over him. Not a mile down the road, Sam wouldn't stop. I saw him, ma'am, with the seaweed on him. He stood in the middle of the road and tried to stop the car. Get Miss Jan's things up to her room. But that man, he's badly hurt or, or dead. There's no one on the road. Remember that. I saw him. Sam saw him. He admits it. Go inside now. And freshen up, Jan. So you still believe in this voodoo? I thought it was a nightmare from my childhood. I thought everything would be different now. Later on, Jan, you'll decide for yourself. I'm sorry I had to start like this on your first night back. to a calm crossing, which we already had. The hook dragged anchor at 18 fathoms. Okay, okay, lower the launch. Okay, sir. No, I don't want any more things. <laughs> and here's to a million bucks in diamonds, which we're soon going to have. You're getting drunk. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> In a few days, I'm going to deck that lovely, beautiful body of yours with diamonds from head to toe. <laughs> now, what would I do with diamonds on my toes? Never mind. It was a sweet thought. And what are you going to do with your diamonds, Jeff? Me? I'm going to stuff mine in a nice little box I rent at the First National Bank in New York. Oh, now that's real romantic. Uh, you're listening to Port, Mona. Your husband's the man over there. Can't you take a friendly little kiss without trying to make something out of it? Now, how about me, Mona? Don't I get a kiss, too? You don't get a cut of the diamonds, Doctor. Well, if I had known what went with them, I would have insisted on a share. Well, listen to the old boy, a regular Romeo. The launch is ready, sir. Shots, fool! I tell you, I hit him, whoever it was. Both times. More likely you hit Johnson. Huh? He's dead. I couldn't have hit him. I'm not that drunk. I don't think you did. His neck's broken. Well, who did it? Who was that? Get the others. Let's get them to shore.
was it? You wouldn't believe me, Jan. You didn't learn such things at school. I thought it was a man. I saw him walk right into the water. He came down to watch the ship arrive. I didn't expect him so soon. But after what happened to you on the road, I knew they'd be here tonight. Peters? I'm Dr. Eggert. I've been expecting you. This is my great-granddaughter, Jan Peters. How do you do, Miss Peters? This is George Harrison, Mrs. Harrison, and uh, this is our diver, Jeff Clark. One of my men has just been murdered. I know. I heard the voices and the shots. What's going on? I wrote. I warned you of the danger. You mean that voodoo stuff? It was a man. I fired at him. And you hit him. But it didn't help, did it? I want the police. The police will do you no good, Mr. Harrison. They're far away. We'll have to bury the poor man. Tonight? Well, he's dead. May as well bury him. Police want to dig him up later? That's their business. There's no casket. But I'll get someone to sew him up in sailcloth. These are the graves of the first group that came after the diamonds. That was in 1906. They were British. This was a German expedition in 1914, just before the outbreak of war. What I want to know is, how'd they all die, Mrs. Peters? Another British group tried their luck in 1923. Portuguese in 1928. The first American showed up 10 years later, 1938. sixth attempt to recover the diamonds. Whose graves are these? The first one is for your dead sailor. The others for the rest of us. She's trying to scare us. She wants the jewels for herself. I've learned that no one who comes for the diamonds can be frightened away. <laughs> and have the large guest room. According to Eggert, the Susan B. is lying in about 100 feet of water on a sandbar. Say, uh, where is Eggert? He's having a powwow with the old lady. <laughs> Maybe you can find out why the old lady was so anxious to have those graves dug in advance. Now, if the sandbar hasn't moved, it should be about here. Well, this one baffles me. It's, um, it's pre-Christian, of course, but it, um, it doesn't seem to be truly African. You know, it's closer to those figures on Easter Island than anything I've seen. You've picked the prize of the collection quick enough. <laughs> I guess you do know something about Africa. Just who are those people you're with? Well, as I wrote you, I've spent 20 years researching the legends of the Susan B. Mr. Harrison owns the salvage ship. He came for the diamonds. I came for the story. I think I'd die happy if I could complete the research on my book. 
Not that I'm eager to occupy one of those graves. Only fools are afraid of the grave. There are worse things. Bodies around here must be buried quickly, Dr. Eckert. You mean the climate? No. I don't like to explain to idiots who think I'm in my dotage, but you should understand. Walking dead. You believe in them? And so will you before the week is out. My husband, Captain Jeremy Peters of the Susan B. He was one of them. That picture was made over 60 years ago. He looks almost the same today, except for the eyes. I've seen him. You know the story. The Susan B. put in here for trade in 1894. The sailors discovered a temple with a golden cask full of uncut diamonds. They stole the cask. There was a fight, and ten of the sailors were presumed dead, the captain among them. The others returned to the ship with the cask. Then, surprisingly, the ten missing men appeared. Something happened. The rest of the crew was slaughtered, and the ship scuttled in the bay. You think that these ten men that had been killed returned to their ship? They were dead then, and they're dead now. But they're still guarding those cursed diamonds. One of them killed your sailor tonight. They killed everyone who's come for the diamonds. But they're murderers, your own husband. They're dead, I tell you. They have no morality, no free will. They'll kill anyone who tries to steal the diamonds. But what about you? Oh, don't bother me. They seem to know I don't want their precious treasure. It was more than 50 years ago that I heard rumors that my husband was seen around here, and I came back to find out. Slowly, I pieced the story together. I built this house... You want to be with him, with your husband, this dead man? I Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby to get ourselves a treat. Delicious things to eat. The popcorn can't be beat. The sparkling drinks are just dandy. The chocolate bars and that candy. So let's all go to the lobby to get ourselves a treat. Let's all go to the lobby to get ourselves a treat. Back to Creature Features. Now, if you watch the show, you know, this is the part of the show where we talk about the person that didn't get talked about. And this week... It's going to be Captain Peters, Grandma's husband, played by French Hagney. He left us in 73. He was in movies like The Sea Beast, so apparently he's met Mom, and The Rifleman, and Captain Video, Master of the Stratosphere. I came to help him return to dust, to find his eternal rest. But how? How can you do that? <laughs> woman again.
way to fight them. You listen to me. I'll help you get the diamonds. Where'd he go? You'll never find him. Well, I'm clearing out. Diamonds or no diamonds, I'm getting out of here. You're staying. George, you saw that thing. I came here for the diamonds. I'm staying and so are the rest of you. But if you knew there'd be all this trouble, people killed, why did you let them come? I didn't let them do anything. Edgar Roten told me they were coming. I don't own the diamonds or the bay. But you wanted them to come. Yes, I want them to find the diamonds and then destroy them. Only when the diamonds are destroyed will your grandfather be able to rest. Destroy them? Do you think Harrison is the kind of a man who would destroy the diamonds after going to all the trouble of finding them? Throw them away because of an old wives' tale about men who died 60 years ago but aren't dead? If they ever find the diamonds, they'll be glad to destroy them. I know what I have to do. And this time, there'll be an end to the diamonds and an end to the walking dead. Hello? Weren't you afraid it was a zombie out here? I understand they don't smoke. They're afraid of fire. Then you know all about them, too. Only what my grandmother says. And you believe her? No. Then who broke into the house tonight? Who killed Johnson? I wish I knew. I wanted to ask you to leave with the others. Give it up before any more are killed. Do I look like I'm afraid of zombies? Johnson is dead. So are many others buried behind the house. It's not worth the risk. Oh, yes, it is. If those diamonds are half of what they're cracked up to be, my share may come to a million dollars. That's a lot of loot. What is it worth if you're dead? Oh, look, Miss Peters. I may be a dumb diver, but I got an A in arithmetic at PS 81. That's New York. And this is the way it figures. Usually, as a diver, I make a hundred bucks a day. And if I'm lucky, I work three days out of every week. That's 15 grand a year. Now, do you know how many years I'd have to work to make a million? 67 years. You better go back to school, learn how much 60 years of life is worth, or 50, or 20, or even 10. <laughs> All right, I'll make you a promise. If I get that million, or even half, I'll give up my dangerous occupation. I'll never dive into anything deeper than a swimming pool. Or if, uh, if that makes you nervous, I'll, uh, I'll stick to very dry martinis. Not funny? I didn't think you'd listen. There's something else. Tonight, when Sam was driving me home, we hit one of those men, not a mile down the road, we hit him hard, ran over him. We must have killed him. I'd like to find out. So would I. Can we get the car? They're supposed to be afraid of flares. Even if I agreed with you and wanted to quit, it's not my show. It's Harrison's equipment and Harrison's money. That's why he waltzes off with three quarters of whatever we find. Right there. Just ahead, I think I see something. It was right over there. Be careful. Out here, maybe a bit down the road. Let's look. Remains of your headlamp. 
must fit something right here. What is it? Seaweed. Water and seaweed. You suppose he could have come from the bay? It just suddenly appeared on the road. Mason toward the road. So he did come from the direction of the bay. He must have been hit back there where we found the glass and the button. He was thrown a few yards and run over down there. Let's go back and see what we can pick up back right there. Take one side of the road and I'll take the other. See if you can find some more footprints. Jeff! He just picked himself up and walked away. I'd like to follow these. Tonight? No. no I'll get something to mark the place. We'll come back with the others in the morning.
Can you hear me? Try to get away while I back him down with these flares. that very gun along. What made you think of it? I remembered how that old lady drove off that joker last night with the torch. I didn't know where the girl was taking me. I figured she was leading me in for a setup. So I grabbed the very gun from the locker. You say this mausoleum in the middle of the jungle is about uh, 40 by 20 feet. And no running water or central heating. If you like, we'll pack a picnic lunch and walk over there. Do you think you could find it again? Oh, I should. You kept me up all night making notes. You know, Doc, you're going to have to cut me in on the royalties from your book. I think you were right the first time. I'll give you odds little Miss Sweetness and Light was leading you into a trap. You can bet that she had that old witch at the bottom of what's going on. Good morning. Good morning, morning, Miss Sweetness. Warm milk, Margaret. I want to thank you for saving Jan's life, Mr. Clark. She's very precious to me, and I will be always grateful. Now you got a friend for life, Jeff. We all die in good time, Mrs. Harrison. There's a grave waiting for all of us. You old hag! You're dead already. You just don't have sense enough to lie down. Shut up! Well, it's true. She's at the bottom of what's going on around here, and you all know it. I'm sorry, Mrs. Peters, but, uh... You see, she learned her manners as a hostess in Eddie's Front Street Saloon. As I was saying... I'm grateful, and I'll do whatever I can to help you recover the diamond. Thanks, but it won't make any difference now. You see, I've decided to give it up. What? You can't quit like this. I practically taught you the business. You should have taught me the business end of the business. Then I'd be up on deck taking a sun bath and getting 75% while you went below and played footsies with the fishes. We made a deal. I've sunk 30000 into this. Practically everything I've got. Get yourself another boy. Do the diving yourself. Nobody told me there'd be a crew of cutthroats pushing up the odds. And I don't care who's behind them. Okay. I'll give you another 5%. Maybe he's right, George. We ought to quit. This place gives me the creep. One more word out of you now. What do you do? Put me in irons. What do you want? I did some arithmetic last night, Harrison. You know, 50% isn't hard to resist. I hope you live to collect it. Oh, but I intend to. You see, I'm counting on you to keep me alive. At least until after we get the diamonds. We're losing the whole morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. You all right? So you're going ahead? Yeah. Harrison talked me into it. Ask Mrs. Peters. I tell you, I buried that knife in his throat. So you missed a vital spot. Okay, but I should have got a little blood out of that eight-inch plate. Do you believe in the walking dead, Dr. Eggert? All I know is what I've read. What's it say in the book, Doc? Are they supposed to be good swimmers? Well, they wouldn't have to breathe. Well, that's my weakness. I have to breathe. Try to remember that, Harrison. Any last words? Just find the diamond. I'm only going to try and locate the cabin. Fifteen minutes. Don't get yourself killed, Jeff. It would be such a waste. Can you hear me? Telephone okay? Air pressure okay? All right, let's go.
Water's clear. But I don't see anything yet. The Zay number one helmet of yours is leaking. Front port gasket. Where'd you get it? In the surplus store? Is it bad? Not yet. Keep it coming. Fifty feet. Get your suit ready. Seventy-five feet. How's the leak? No worse. You want to come up? No, not yet. Pour away. I see something right under me. Easy. I'm looking right into the hole. Try? Yes. It's no dive at all. It's less than a hundred feet. But why go down? You're not in position. Well, I'm not going to let him get his hands on those diamonds without me being there. Pressure reads zero. Is he free? Can you haul him in? He seems to be coming up, unless... Unless what? Unless the cable snap. Well, why don't you go down and see? Well, this is the quickest way. Keep him rolling. Get him to a doctor. The nearest doctor is at the Angel Mission. That's five hours driving each way. I do the doctoring around here. Over my dead body. That's his breathing. If we don't do something to help that quick, he may not come out of it. I'll fix something for him. You're not going to let her feed him anything, are you? What do you think? Well, I don't think she's a murderess, but... Uh... But she's out of her head. I don't know if he's breathing at all now. This will stimulate his breathing. Give him about an ounce every hour. Well, it's not that we distrust you, Mrs. Peters, but... Put it down. Give it to him or not, as you please. Wait! Wait! 
It's potent. But it won't hurt you. I'll let you know if there's any change. Okay, Florence Nightingale. Call me when you're ready to go off shift. Get me. Ah. I just can't stand the excitement. Exotic Africa. Wild animals and tropical night. Here I am teaching a professor how to play blackjack. Uh, I have 21. Well, okay. So he owes you another thousand matchsticks. Relax. Well, why doesn't she tell us what's going on? She just told you a half an hour ago. Sleeping peacefully and breathing normally. What do you want, a bulletin every ten minutes? Well, I'm going to see for myself. Don't start any trouble. How do you feel? No, no, don't stop. Yes, I finally made it. Soft clouds, golden stairways, trumpets, and angels. Not a chance, Jeff. You're in Africa. And from where I sit, it looks a lot more like the other place. Why didn't you call us when he wakened? He just did. Oh, sure. What goes on here? Are you getting time and a half on this job? Why didn't you call us? I told you I didn't want any trouble. What do you expect a phony caveman act to get you? I told you to stay away from him. Now I'm going to give you the only kind of lesson you seem to understand. <laughs> You'll have to come back. How's Jeff? Oh, he's okay. I'll talk to him after a while about what happened at the wreck. They say of the walking dead that their souls can find no eternal rest, that they exist in torment. If only people could find peace of soul and mind while they're alive. We've had that fire going for two hours now. If Mona could see it, she could have found a way back. But you're inside that tangle you can't see very far. She wouldn't have ventured into the jungle by herself. They have her, I'm sure. We'll have to go after her, then. To the graveyard? I'll go, too. Sure you want to go along? Well, I'd like to help. This won't be on any sightseeing expedition. If they've had her this long, it won't do any good. They'll get you all. Should be right about here. I clocked it on my way back last night. You want to use the very gun again? You want a gun, Doc? No, thanks. I'll take an extra flashlight. All right, let's go. Here's a path. Hart and Johnny, you two bring up the rear. Keep a close watch out on both sides. Doc, you stay in the middle. You stay close behind me. Don't fire unless you have to. All right, let's go. side of the boulder. The old lady tells me this was a European cemetery for the people who dug the diamonds a hundred years ago. All right, Johnny, you two stay here. Any of them show up, try the flares. 
You want to come with us? I'll go. Okay. You carry the gasoline. Maybe not. We'll get her. Let's figure on getting out of here, too. Doc, empty the gas on both sides of the door. All right. Okay, now, keep your eyes on him. I'll be right behind you. I'll try and hold him back with these flares. She is dead. Let's get out of here! Mona, look! Mona, are you all right? Get her out of here, I'll cover you. Okay! so glad. She's as cold as... She is all right, isn't she? She hasn't said a word. Maybe she's been drugged or in shock. I think you'd better get her to bed. She's dead. The wife is dead, Mr. Harris. You saw her walk in here. You all saw her walk. With her eyes. Not breathing. It's cold as death. I won't listen to that crazy talk. You hear me? Not no more of it. I'm going to put her to bed. Not in this house. Please, Grandmother. If we can take her out to the ship. No. I know this is your house, but I'm not going to move her tonight. Now, if you're afraid, you get out. I'm not afraid for myself. I'm afraid for you, for all of you. Miss Peters, would you help me put her to bed? Of course. What about us? Let them stay. First bedroom. You may need them. Mona. Why don't you close your eyes and get some sleep? Jeff, you up? How's Mona? Uh, no change. You willing to go down tomorrow? Well, the safe's right there. I figure one more dive and we should be able to get to it. Why? You want to pull out? I ought to think about Mona. I ought to get it to a doctor.
light more candles. Lots of them. He's dead. She knifed him, then she went for me. Tell Sam to bring up all the big candles he can find. Now, now, force her back to her room. These, they're afraid of fire. I guess it's the only thing that can destroy them. She's sick, Mrs. Peters. She's out of her head, isn't she? I'm sorry, Mr. Harris. I know exactly how you feel. A couple more in the doorway. Far a work here. A work underwater, too. They blaze like that and they won't bother you. They'll stay inside. I understand. Unless they have another way out. That's worth a try. We might have them bottled up. Anyway, you and your men will be all right if you stay near the fire. We'll be here. Let's go. The way I figure it, it can't be much of a safe. I should be able to cut it open in five or ten minutes. Now, while I'm burning off the hinges, you stand by with another torch. If any of them do show up, you hold them off with your torch. That fire keeps them out of circulation. It'll be dark before we're through. About that damaged compressor. I'm glad we found out before we dive. We could wait till tomorrow. I thought you wanted to pull out some more and get Mona to day car. Another day won't matter. Look, day or night, it's dark down there. Besides, tomorrow I might have cold feet. Like you got now. Okay. Doc, you take care of the intercom so we can talk to each other, huh? Sure thing, Jeff. Harrison, can you hear me? I hear you. Air pressure okay? Pressure's okay. All right, I'll go ahead. You follow at 10 feet. And watch my line. Go ahead. Good luck, Jeff. Uh, you too, uh, George. I'm on the bottom. Can you hear me, George? I hear you. And I see you. Side hinges. You know, I think I can get into her with a scout knife. This stuff is burning like firewood. I'll have the first hinge off in a minute. Second hand. How much longer? Just one more minute. I've got the hinges off. Seconds to 
get out of here. I can't hold them off. I'm going up. Take me up. Take me up. Send the diver stage down. waiting to jump me. I want to make sure my lights are clear. You want to give me the word? Start winding away like mad. We understand, Jeff. Give us the word. It worked. Where's Harrison? He's just breaking surface now. They're all over him. Four or five of them. Use the flare. a lot of blood. He's in his cabin. We're running out of flares. Save him. Look, they're coming on board. Get the torches and the kerosene. Yes. Let's see if we can keep it. Take it. The cabin locks itself in. <laughs> Take this and make a break for it. 
I get through, I'll head for shore in the launch. They'll follow me, and that'll give you a chance to get away. Don't try it, Jeff. Not so bad. Take it. He's not trying to steal a diamond. Shut up! But he saved your life and mine. That's more than you could do on your bad leg. I know it better than you. Take out that dinghy. You're safe. I was so worried. Later. I saw that. I've got things to do. Come on. She's coming out of it. Mona! You sure have her hypnotized. Come on. where all the others fail. I thought you might. Listen, there's a whole flock of them after this. They'll be here in a few minutes, and they're playing pretty rough, and I don't want to be around here when they get here. I don't want Jan around, or you either, Mrs. Peters. I figure we can get into the car, take Mona, and clear out. We can meet up with Harrison at Dakar. Well, I'd split my end of the take with you. I figure you've got something coming after all these years. That is, if there is a take. I'm still not sure we found the diamonds. How do you get this open? It's older than the pyramids. They didn't have any springs or screws, of course, but they did know something about levers. Usually... Give me a scarf, quick. Get the launch. Start it up. We'll be going back to the boat in two minutes. If any of them show up, hold them off with the torches. <clears throat> girl to bring me that chest. So if there's any funny business, I'll shoot you for trying to steal the diamonds and deserting us while we we're under attack. Well, that's not true. He took all the risk himself. Listen, Harrison. I haven't the time. Pee Wee and Johnny are getting steam up. Mike and Tony are waiting at the launch. I'm taking Mona and the diamonds out of here. I just wrote a new deal. Give it to him. Maybe you got it open. How are you going to know? Oh, please don't. You'll ruin it. I'll find a way. If you follow me, I'll kill you. But the diamonds should really be yours. You found them. You saved them. Thanks, Dad. Come here.
have to make a run for the launch. Understand? Come on. Go on, get in. So fast. Let's get him inside. But you don't even know for sure if they want the diamonds. Maybe they just wanted the chest. We could have seen the end of them. They want the diamonds. They'll be back when they find the chest is empty. <laughs> but how could I destroy them even if I wanted to? Cast them to the wind. Scatter them over the sea so that no man will ever find them. Come with me, Jen. We can be on the ship in a few minutes and out in the bay in ten more. <laughs> where will they catch us? In New York? No matter where you go, they'll follow you. Well, I'll get rid of the diamonds fast. I'll turn them over for cash. They'll be sold in every capital in the world. <laughs> what would they do? Pick at all the jewelry stores in Fifth Avenue? Oh, look, Jan, I want you with me. I want you to enjoy the money, too. I want you to marry me. I think I'd like that, Jeff. I can't go. I can't leave like this. You mean you believe all this, too? That if I jump the diamonds, they'll disappear? Yes, it's true. They'll stop walking the earth. They'll find their eternal rest. The diamonds must be destroyed. You can't rob them of this. Jan... She believes. She spent a lifetime believing. You can't rob her of this. Well, I can't throw them away. Maybe I wish I could. I'm going to take them with me. And you're coming with me, too. Both of you. I can't leave you behind. Not where they're still prowling around. I'm staying right here. But you can't stay here now. It's too dangerous. I'm sorry, but if I have to, I'll carry you. I believe you would. We don't have any time, Mrs. Peters. I'll put you off wherever you say. If you like, I'll arrange to get you back here later. Help her in. For the diamonds. What are we waiting for? Please, not yet. We're safe enough now. Captain Peter, must you go on? Okay, take them. The diamonds, Mrs. Peters. They're yours. Do what you want with them. Jeremy Peters, at long last. Probably never be rich again.
You know, Bob, I always loved this movie, and a lot of people compare it to Pirates of the Caribbean. Now, I see that you've survived, and you're not cursed or a zombie, so, so far, so good. This was a generally all-around fun movie. You have indestructible zombies that are frightened by fire. And what would be worth today in $10 million of diamonds? There's also a beautiful woman that doesn't resist what you do to her, or doesn't say anything. And stays immortally young. Man, this movie could have been different if it made at another time. It would have been a lot darker. <laughs> and speaking of things turning dark, we have our Netflix and chill moment. This week, we have a TV series called Daybreak. Yes, the end of the world has come, but you know some teens are more flexible than others, and they don't need everything, as long as they get a few things, I guess. So they've learned to survive and even put a humorous bend on it. Now, don't expect a lot of gritty witticisms or snappy repartee in this movie. There may be a few good jokes, but this is a, a fun time viewing that you can watch with your kids and inform them of the proper ways to prepare for the apocalypse. So get your kids together and salvage the last of last year's Halloween candy and watch Daybreak on Netflix this week. Now, sadly, this week, we did lose a few people. The young and beautiful, intelligent Larissa McComas passed away. She was in some B-movies and in some movies that we can't talk about, but we will miss her. And tough guy actor Henry Silva passed away at 95. He did everything from the Twilight Zone to the 80s Buck Rogers and even Ocean's Eleven. Well, that's our show for this week. Tune in next week when we'll have another special Halloween-type movie to get you in the mood. So until then, remember to wash your hands like you've just murdered the rightful king. And that he's Bob, I'm Al, and we'll see you at the movies. Bob wants to remind you that all the junk in your house used to be money. Unless you're really rich and the furniture is gold leaf and then it's still technically money. Mm -hmm.